Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of the 2016 London Chess Classic. If you like this video and if you like the videos on my channel in general, it would be great if you could subscribe to the Chess to Impress YouTube channel. That would be fantastic. The 2016 London Chess Classic is the last tournament of the Grand Chess Tour. Earlier tournaments were in Paris in France, Leuven in Belgium and St. Louis in the US and you can find videos on those tournaments on this channel. Only two players can win the Grand Chess Tour, Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura, both from the US and fate had it that they played each other in the first round of the London Chess Classic. It also happened to be Hikaru Nakamura's 29th birthday he was white, Wesley So was black, and let's see what happened in that game. Nakamura played d4, So answered knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3 and d5 were entering the Grunfeld defense, very popular at all levels. C takes d5, knight takes e4, Knight takes c3, b takes and bishop g7. White has a very impressive pawn center, but black is saying I will attack that center from all sides. Bishop e3, c5, rook c1. Here queen d2 is the most common move, but rook c1 is also very popular. Castling, queen d2, and now e7, e5. But Nakamura plays the logical d4, d5. It's a protected pass pawn, it may come in handy in the end game. So why not play that move? So played knight d7, protecting the c5 pawn which was under attack. c4 and so played f5. He's better developed and has to play energetically. Bishop g5, attacking the queen, and knight f6. We're only 12 moves into the game, but we already have a crisis here. The e4 pawn is under attack and white has to do something about it. The best thing to do would be bishop to play bishop d3 and if then black takes the pawn you can retreat the bishop to b1 and your plan is knight g1 e2 g3 and that way you will win the pawn back one day at the same time you develop your pieces that would have been perfectly reasonable but nakamura very quickly played knight e2 here Later his second confirmed that he had mixed up his preparation. So took 15 minutes but in the end decided to take on e4. He said he really needed to check this because he thought Nakamura was still, was still in his preparation. And also he said I'm hanging my queen so I better make sure it's, it works out. Black wins a pawn here and not only a pawn as we can see. The queen is attacked, the bishop is attacked twice, so white has no option. He has to take the queen, knight takes d2, and if white takes the knight here, then black takes the bishop. So white tried bishop e7 as an intermediate move, attacking the rook, rook f7, still attacking the bishop, and bishop takes c5. That way white has won his pawn back, but at a price as we will see in a few moves. So took on f1 and after a long think, a very long think, Nakamura took back with the rook. Grandmaster Yasa Saravan in the broadcast said the position is a train wreck for white. And why is this so bad for white? 
Black has the bishop pair. He has a very nice pawn center there on e5 and f5. The white knight doesn't really have a purpose in this position. And also very importantly, the white king is still in the middle. And finally, the pawn on c4 is very vulnerable, as we'll see in the game. Let's see what happened. So played it very well. First he kicked the bishop with b6, bishop b4, and bishop a6, attacking that sore point on c4. Nakamura played f4 to try and get some counterplay. Rook c8, f takes d5, bishop takes d5, rook f3, and so now took the pawn on c4, winning a pawn, but he took with the bishop. Taking with the rook would have been more logical. Taking with the bishop needed very good calculation because so put himself into a pin voluntarily. But it all works out. Rook e3, hitting the bishop, bishop g7 back, and knight f4. Rook d7, attacking another weak pawn, and Nakamura played a2, a4. He's trying to prevent b6, b5, which would anchor black's bishop on c4. So played bishop h6, planning to take away the defender of the d5 pawn. g3, bishop takes as planned g takes, and rook takes d5, winning a second pawn. Nakamura played rook e7, and some commentators thought that he might have some drawing chances here. He might win a pawn back, and if he can then swap the rooks, then there's bishops of opposite colors, and that may give him drawing chances. But Wetley so had seen it much better than the commentators. He played rook d4, attacking another pawn. Nakamura defended it with bishop d2. And then king f8. And you should not take one of those pawns now on a7 or h7 because then after rook e8 check, king d1, you have to protect the bishop, and then bishop b3 check. You win a lot of material with black and the game. But Nagamura played bishop b4, and it looks a bit tricky for black because of this discovered attack option. But the last move of the game was rook e8 and Nakamura resigned because this discovered attack is an illusion. Yes, you can play a flashy move like rook e4 check, but it, is, it doesn't really work because after simply king f7, you cannot take that unprotected rook on d4 because your own rook is pinned. So all you can do here is swap the rooks and then, for example, play bishop d2 protecting that pawn and I'll give you a variation, rook e4 check. If you go to d1 with the king, there's again bishop b3 winning. And if you go to f2, then there's, for example, rook e2 check, king f3. The bishops are taken, so no more opposite colored bishops, and rook takes h2. And with three pawns extra, a strong grandmaster like Wesley So will win this with his eyes closed. This is what Wesley So said in his interview after the game. I was surprised when I saw knight e2. I thought it was part of his preparation, as he played it quite quickly. I thought about my reply for a while. After all, I was hanging my queen with knight takes e4. I wasn't sure how good it was for me, but I was able to set him some problems, as his king side was undeveloped. Sometimes you think you are playing your preparation, but you're mixing things up and are just blundering instead. I didn't know it was Hikaru's birthday. It's a good thing I didn't know. So a great start for Wesley So and a very bad start for Hikaru Nakamura losing his first game with White on his birthday. Hope you enjoyed this game and if you did please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel and I'm looking forward to your comments. This is Rick from Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.